Hello and God bless you. It's Ellen Mongan. And today we're going to go tell the world. What are we going to go tell the world? We're going to tell the world about Jesus. And we're going to tell about the ministry of Damascus. So on my show today, I have my co-host Judy Hartney and my two guests. Oh, no, my host also, also it's my got Laura. And, and then we have Sam. They're going to tell a little bit about themselves just so you get to know them. And then after they share, I'm going to share why we do what we do. And we're going to talk about Damascus, a ministry you may have not discovered yet, but you really need to check it out. If you have questions, we'll have the end, tell our emails and and we'll tell a little more about it. So Judy, hi Judy. How are you doing? Hello. She's, you Good. Know, about Thank you. she's a well, she's an Ali representative. She's in a Christian community called Ali. So you want to tell about your yourself and your family? Okay. Well, I actually um came to Augusta, Georgia as a nursing student to the Medical College of Georgia to finish a degree in nursing almost 50 years ago, it was September of 1974. And I found out about Alleluia Community and talked to a priest about it, checked it out and ended up joining by the end of October that year and have loved it ever since. So it's been almost 50 years for me. Uh, I ended up marrying Tom Hartney. Uh, my name was Zhang Lion. I was originally from Ohio and marrying Tom Hartney in January of 87. And I have seven children and hopefully five in heaven that uh, did not come to fruition. But um, anyway, I am very grateful for the children that I have. Uh, the oldest is 36 and the youngest is 23, five girls and two boys. And uh, about six years ago, my daughter Bernadette um, told us that she, instead of going to medical school, she was really thinking about being at least a summer missionary to this one Catholic youth summer camp that she had learned about. And that's what we're going to talk about today, Damascus. So I'll hey, let it doesn't look pregnant, but she's expecting there. three more grandkids. How many does that make yeah, for you? Three more boys. So that'll be, uh, let's see, eight boys and two girls. Yeah. See, so awesome. And okay. So Laura from, you uh, from Augusta, Georgia, and Laura is from Ohio. So hey, Laura, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm, we actually live right by Kings Island in Cincinnati. So uh, we, it's funny how God works. We, my husband and I met at a dance at West Point in 1988, I believe. And we got engaged, got married in 1990. Uh, he took off the desert storm and uh, he was a, I think he was a first lieutenant. Um, anyway, we had our first daughter, Linda in 92 and our second son, second child, Ray, uh, 93. And then we moved to Fort Carson, Colorado, and we had our son, John, who's our third. Um, and then from there, we went to Cincinnati. We were actually here, 97 to 2000, and gave birth to our fourth child, Victoria. And um, it's, it's funny, I, I didn't want to leave, and my husband made a major, so we had to move. And we always said we'd come back. So uh, God really was really putting on my heart about helping moms, pregnant moms uh, at the pregnancy center and... Uh, you know, it's just funny how we started donating our clothes that the kids grew out of and stuff like that and moved all over uh, from from Cincinnati. He got a uh, orders to uh, go to West Point. And so we moved into my parents' house and remodeled their house while they were at Catholic Family Land um, and remodeled their house. And then from there, uh, we went to, uh, let's see, I don't know, I'm trying to think. We moved around so many times. We were nine times in 16 years, off post, on post, you know, so... <laughs> Then from there, we went to uh, Fort, uh, we go, we Fort Carson, Colorado. I said that to John. He was the third child. So then we went to um, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and uh, he was deployed with the soldiers in Iraq, uh, 101st Airborne. And that was uh, 2003. Uh, he took off. And that was, uh, gosh, I think God really helping me understand people more and uh, women helping a lot of the soldiers wives and my degrees in social work so that's really you know where my heart's at but uh when you know when he was when he was a basic training commanding commander and a field artillery commander helped the wives then too but uh it was really i would say a year of the guys being deployed it was a lot you know and meeting sure. with the other moms and supporting them and just showing them being the hands and feet of christ you know so we were there uh he was deployed for iraq we came back and i was pregnant with uh Teresa. Uh, she's our Damascus volunteer. And yeah, uh, that's a movie. Yeah. Stop movie. <laughs> I thought she, I would tell you movie you got pregnant, but go on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, pretty much, except for, for West Point, we were still busy remodeling. But so then we had uh, Teresa. So, so Teresa is 19. And then um, we really, I tell you, it was it was a real hard 
challenge to help families. And I really learned how many families don't have moms and dads behind them to help them. And I was surprised. It was uh, for Christmas and Thanksgiving, they didn't want to go home. So uh, it was so many dysfunctional families. They joined the military to get away from that dysfunctional family. So then from there, we went to, um, gosh, I'm trying to think. We went to uh, Fort Knox and he was finishing up. He was pretty much uh, getting ready to retire. So we had Diana there. Uh, we were off post though. We lived in, since we lived north of uh, Louisville. It was called Crestwood, Kentucky. And that's where all my pro-life work started and, and really just uh, being a respect life coordinator, leading sidewalk advocates for life and 40 days for life. Uh, really just helping moms choose life at the abortion clinic and my daughter said to me, the reason why I feel like God's calling me to mass is because you were always there rescuing women at the abortion clinic and helping moms choose life and do baby showers. And, and he's, she's, I want to do, I want to do this by helping kids in high school and in and, and, uh, seventh and eighth grade, just bringing Christ to them. So like I did on the sidewalk. So it was pretty cool. So uh, my husband retired from the army in 2007 and uh, his name is Adam. I think I said that I'm not too sure, but uh, then we went, uh, we came back here in 2019 um, it was really hard because I was so involved with Sidebook Advocates for Life and teach helping moms at the abortion clinic and 40 Days for Life. Uh, we prayed 24 seven the fall and the spring and had so many different conversions. It was just a beautiful thing. So love Sean Carney. Um, just it's, it's a beautiful thing. So but really felt like God was getting us ready for Teresa's mission because our first four kids went to University of uh, Kentucky, uh, University of Kentucky, UK. So. But Teresa, we came here and Teresa was involved with St. Gertrude's youth group and um, just really loved it. So anyway, but uh, before we got before we got here, I was I did give birth to our seventh child. I forgot to mention Christina. She's 13. So our oldest is 32. Our youngest is 13. And we have three grandbabies and one on the way. So uh, just very blessed. But yeah, I just still keep in touch with the two moms, the last two moms that chose life. Uh, helping them financially, just keeping their phone bills on or, you know, during COVID, getting, making sure they had toilet paper, you know, um, just little things that they don't have moms to help out. So I think just showing other people that you can help and you can make a difference uh, just by being, you know, loving and being a mom that, you know, these, some of these girls don't have a good mom. Um, they're addicted to drugs. Uh, the parents are selfish. Uh, it's sad. So uh, Teresa is really been the one that has been so great when we had moms come over and drop the kids off for the day to go on a date or whatever. She'd help babysit and uh, just really has a servant heart, you know, so uh, it's, it's amazing. But yeah, we, we wanted to come back and God called us back here. We're like, yes, thank you, God. So um, and so I guess she was a St. Gertrude's youth group with a lady named Megan Dicker. And uh, Megan always told her about going to Catholic youth summer camp, but we, we never could get the registration right. We wanted them to go. Um, my, you know, around the time my father passed away, he had to sign up, but my daughter, my father passed away and it was just, it was real hard on us. So um, we went, uh, she went to a different Damascus and then finally then she was at St. At Franciscan at Franciscan. They said, uh, Hey, they're looking for some volunteers at Damascus. And uh, she, a friend of hers was going to the Centerville um, one. And uh Anyway, so Teresa is like, I really feel like God's calling me. I was praying in the chapel or Franciscan, and I just felt like God was saying, you need to do this. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful journey. And just hearing her be so excited each week when kids come and, and telling us, like, you know, I think there's several kids. She's really blessed hearts, and it's, it's beautiful. So anyway, yeah, we're happy to be back in Cincinnati and uh, looking forward to our uh, fourth grandchild being born September 5th. So so um so then last but not least is um sam and so i'll tell about yourself then we'll start the show good morning okay i uh my name is sam fatzinger i'm married to rob we've been married for 35 years and we have 14 children we live in Bowie, maryland we have uh four children who have been blessed by camp damascus they are my 10th my 10th child, my 11th child, my 13th, and my, so my, um, my, <laughs> we just got back from our fourth year participating in it. It has been truly amazing for my kids to learn about their faith from someone else. I've homeschooled all my children, so 
it was really important for them to seek God on their own and not with, you know, because mom and dad told me to. And our first year at Camp Damascus was 2020. And I sent three kids and it was during COVID. And my middle son had a huge conversion. I'll, I, I'll send you the link to his YouTube video that they used. So awesome. For, so amazing. And then the following year, my uh, my other daughter and my other son had the, the theme was Eucharist. And they came home. Uh, I had been dragging my kids to daily mass since they were born. And <laughs> they came home because the theme that summer was the Eucharist. And they came home dragging me to mass. Mom, oh. we're gonna be late. Mom, I need to serve. Mom, I need. We need to be there half an hour early. So and, awesome. And when I was going to a different mass, the two of them were going by themselves, going early, staying after. Just it was a huge change in their life. And then my daughter, who's now uh, eighteen, about to be, gonna be nineteen, she has been. A, she was a summer kitchen staff minister last year and then this year she's a counselor and she just called last week to say she accepted a two-year ministry program with them and we just are so excited we you know we miss her because we're all in maryland my yeah, other and she's daughter. where is she in is she in ohio or is she in I mean, ohio I okay because there's Center. there's one that laura's daughter's somewhere different but yes yeah, right yeah. Lake Michigan. yeah. yeah. she's in Centerburg, ohio and Centerburg. okay Every day or every week, she sends photos. The kids all laugh because her eyes are squinting because she's smiling so big. Oh. And my and one and one of the siblings are like, "Why are you always squinting?" And her older brother, who's been a focused missionary for seven years, he's like, "Cause she's got the joy, 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 joy down in her heart." That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so we have loved watching her. You know, she tried college and she taught at a. Catholic school for a year and this is her home and this is where she feels God's calling her right now and we love seeing her just every time we talk to her she's just pouring out the stories about the Holy Spirit and working with kids who are agnostic kids who have got no you know it's so interesting she's like these kids don't go to church but her, their parents send them to this Catholic camp so awesome. Interesting. Wow. Well, hi. These gals do not know each other for the audience sake. They just are meeting on air. But I this is my month to when the calls come on this month. I'm having to tell them a little bit about themselves. So you all soon will have a music to start the show and everybody's face is flowing along. But I, I loved hearing your testimonies. I know Laura a little bit. I know Judy for 30 years we've been prayer partners. So it's so great to have you aboard. All y'all, and this is why I do the show. Um a couple of years ago at um, the Orlando Catholic Charismatic Conference, I found this beautiful thing. It's Blessed Mother with the World. I had never seen it. May y'all have seen it before. And it says, Our Lady of All Nations. And I had a daughter go through a divorce. But as you know, the mind is, we didn't think that was going to be part of our walk. But you know, God allows things in your life and He, you embrace what your children and you walk them through it. So what the Lord did for me is I went to adoration. I cried out to the Blessed Mother because at St. Mary's on the Hill, they have a big thing of Blessed Mother. And there's usually people in the adoration chapel, as you know, you don't have it manned by no one. And it wasn't even my church. And I was in there all alone. And I began to cry out to the Lord and say, Blessed Mother, help me. I mean, through Jesus, of course, you all know that, understood. And I, I never used to, I never would pray out to Mary over Jesus, but I felt like it was a mother's heart crying out. And I said, help me. And she said back to me, help me. And I go, wait, wait, <laughs> you don't understand. I'm the one in crisis. I need help. And she said to me, would you go tell the world about my son, Jesus? Well, I let that hold. That was many years ago. My daughter's been remarried and has children with, you know, a long time ago. So what long time ago, what happened? And then last, I think two years ago, I saw this at the charismatic conference. And I never had seen the world and Mary and the cross. Of course, Jesus is... Mary always points to Jesus. So I, I put that on my shelf and I began to say, I guess it's time to start, go tell the world. I always do, already did a podcast called Wow Mom. I continue that. I write Bible studies under moms, for moms and for women. And then this was a new field. I was opening a door. And it all started because of COVID, y'all. Even though COVID was a bad thing, it caused me to stay home and begin my Wow Mom. And then 
Deacon and Dearest, my husband, a deacon in the Catholic Church. We do that. And now this one. So welcome board. And and we'll, we we don't usually do this. We tell by ourselves, but we know you a little better now. And so thank you. So let's just jump in with the Damascus. And I'll just let you go in or the same order and just say say some little things that you feel like the Lord has put on your heart. Because he always is saying, what is this Damascus thing? And how can I get my children to to pull me the new Christmas? And he full of them. I just love that line. So go ahead, Judy. Okay, well, um, I actually wrote a few. If anybody wants to learn really a lot about Damascus, go online. You just go Safari or whatever your is it server is. Whatever. And I put in the Damascus story. And okay. I got lots of facts about it. Okay. But I could tell you from personal experience watching that, I've gone up there at least five times. One, uh, to, be, to begin with, just to visit I uh, see my daughter graduate from her two year program. Maybe the first time was even when she just finished in the summer. But I have been so, so impressed. The fact is, there was two guys, it's my understanding, that served on NET, National Evangelization Team. Okay. And uh, they put their heads together at Ohio State and said, you know what? Um, there's all these kids, these Catholic kids that go to camp, these different Protestant camps and come back Protestant. And it's because the camps are so fun. But the people realize that and they also want the kids to know Jesus. So they pray with them and they encourage them to go to Protestant churches to get to know Jesus better. But our Catholic church has so much wonderful everything in it. Let's figure out how to do this. Maybe we can get some donors. So they started renting, got some donors, rented camps. And then in 2015, actually, they actually were able, they had enough wherewithal to build a 7,500 foot uh, lodge and seven cabins to start the first permanent uh, Centerburg Catholic Youth Summer Camp called Damascus. And uh, now they have served 7,500 campers in one summer, this past summer, I mean, this is going on this summer, and 20,000 total of they now have Catholic um, adults for uh, adult retreats for women and for men, two in the fall and one in the spring for the women and one in the fall and one in the spring for men. And my husband and I have been been to both of these. And I must tell you, I was so impressed. I've been charismatic since, oh gosh, I was 19 years old. But I am telling you, I would go and, and I'd be talking to the Lord in my prayer session and feel like the Holy Spirit was saying something to me and then think, well, I'll test that a while. And then it was, you were allowed to go to different little prayer teams of a man and woman, young man and woman to get prayers. And here we'd be praying. And like after 30 seconds, both of them would come up with Pretty much the same thing that I heard from the Holy Spirit in my mind. And I said, okay, I guess we are really on board here. So oh. anyway, I'm just telling you, not only do, are these enthusiastic young people that have gone, ask people for support, because they have to have a certain amount of monetary support to be able to be a missionary, but they get formation there, besides the formation they've ever had at home, whatever that's been, and then... They really continue to live that out enthusiastically, diligently, prayerfully, and their hearts are so big with wanting that Holy Spirit to be with each one of the children that they minister to and, and adults. And I, I can honestly tell you, I was just so impressed. And I can talk more about the, the actual facts about Damascus, but I can tell you one more thing. Amy Ladbush is my friend. She moved here several years ago from Maryland. She knows Sam and uh, she has 12 children and the number of them had been going to Damascus for four or five years. And we put our heads together. And this year she with some other people were able to work it out where people would know about Damascus and help children's lives change. 60 children came from the Augusta area and went up to Damascus this summer. Wow, and I can crazy. tell you from their parents, um, their parents uh, reports that these kids have been completely turned on to the uh, Eucharist and um, to the love for Jesus and to listening, taking re personal responsibility for going to the Lord and listening to him, their own prayer times. 
I'm going to let, um, I'm going to let Laura go first, that second, but I want to say this, that these women are all in ministry themselves and they formed their children. And they look at, I mean, I know Jews children well, and I, Laura has like three children in ministry as well. It's just like you pass it on and then they, you don't know which child's going to take the mantle, like Elijah, Alicia, and go forth and be in ministry. You always are excited and you pray them through and, you know, they miss, like she's Miss Sam said, she misses her daughter, but you're freely giving her a way to do their fruit. I, I see good fruit. So Laura? Yeah. Well, I, I you know, we've, I never heard of Damascus. Well, we only moved here in 2019. So um, I knew there was something going on by um, the kids who tell me there's a summer camp we need to go to. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And at that time, you know, you're paying for college for the kids. So you're just like, uh, and, you know, it's not that much. I think it was like five or 600 bucks, but just kind of trying to keep up with all the kids. And, um, but finally one of the girls said, mom, I really want to go. Let's try. And so I think there was, a, you know, the timing, it's just like literally when they open the window, like all the kids want to sign up, which that to me is the best sign ever. If all these kids are fighting to try and like get it organized and they really want to go, they know it's something good for them. And uh, it was our youth minister at Esther and she goes, oh, sorry, you're on the waiting list. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, so um, our daughter, Teresa especially, really liked our youth minister uh, and, and Donna too. But Teresa really felt like I want to be like her because she, she, a youth minister, this lady, Megan Dicker, was just not snotty. She was just down to earth and funny and like high five in the kids and just, and, um, she, you know, she'd bring the kids to, to Damascus. And so, um, we, I just really like what I've seen is the kids aren't nerdy. Cause my kids are always like, are they nerdy? You know? So it's always been a hard balance for our kids. Like we don't want to do this because they're going to be nerdy kids. I'm like, I just have some more patience. So, you know, like, I don't know what it is, but anyway, um, I, I always felt like to keep my kids in public school, to be the hands and feet of Christ. And so uh, our son was Ray, he has a um, Joy of the Faith, it's a YouTube channel. Yes, I want you to mention that. Joy of the Faith, Ray. Yeah, Ray, if you look on YouTube, the Joy of the Faith. He's making a Eucharistic Miracle movie. Now this is a kid. I know, I'm so excited. He just filmed, actually, it was helping behind the scenes. They were filming in Louisiana, Jesus Walking on the Water. But now here he is, he went to public school his whole life. he was the captain, uh, well, not the captain. He was a class president, freshman, sophomore, junior year. And kids used to laugh at him. Like, what are you wearing a chastity ring for? And he goes, are you ready to be a father? And he's oh, like, you know, good. we're supposed to be, you know, like. That's right. Bringing kids to Christ. We're bringing other kids to Christ, you know. And so I always, he always made people think. I would get stuff from the, from the, pre- the uh, right to life. And uh, he would always go ahead and write pro-life literature and hand it out to his eighth grade class, you know, in a public school. And one girl said, I will never have an abortion. He wasn't nerdy. <laughs> but he wasn't nerdy. No, he was, he was, was you know, family working nerds. out family and, nerds. On, the football, <laughs> on the football team. So it's a hard job about balance, but anyway, getting back to Damascus, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> sorry, no, I think, I think Teresa saw Ray's, Ray had, I think Ray was a role model to Teresa and then our daughter, Victoria, who um, is a very big role model to Chris, uh, Teresa was like, you know, I think this would be good for you. And I'm like, I don't know. I said, I was hoping you're going to work at King's Island to raise money for paying for tuition for Franciscan. And, and I was like, mom, if it's meant to be, God will provide. I'm like, that's, that's true. You know? And I said, you know, I'd heard about Damascus, but I just thought of it like as a fun summer camp. And, you know, uh, it was beautiful though, just hearing all the kids that she was talked to at Franciscan about how they've been recharged in their faith. And, uh, it was, it was like, she goes, I want to do this. And I said, okay. And so she's my introvert. So she contacted and wrote letters to every single one of our friends and family. And our old realtor from Kentucky, go down a thousand bucks. Like uh, just people that, I mean, people that I, are not Catholic that, you know, are not really in the faith at all donated to her because they saw her passion in her letter. And her letter was just so beautiful. It was reaching out to their hearts I'm like, oh, I remember when I was a kid doing this and, you know, and so she's raised enough money to help, you know, obviously be a, a um, you know, a Damascus missionary. She just, she loves it. It's like, I don't get to talk to her much because she's always so busy. And it's literally like Saturdays for like a couple hours. She's trying to get ready before the kids come Sunday. And she's just, but it's, it's just seeing if you're a mom out there and 
you know, your kids are, you know, kind of like don't want to be around nerds, but they want to be around cool kids that are Catholic. This is such a great program because they're real, genuine kids. And I look forward to hearing from her when she comes home, just, you know, all the people like, you know, the lives she's touched um, and really just her, her pr- approach is really just not in your face, but just really like just caring about people. And uh, it's, she had two seventh and eighth grade girls that came from, I think, Louisiana on a bus up to uh, Michigan and not, not a Catholic, but they both said, I think, I think I'm going to convert. I really feel like God's called me to convert. So, you know, you just don't know. It's interesting that, uh, you know, kids, kids that are really, they went to Catholic school, but um, they went to the Damascus and in in, uh, Brighton, I think it's Brighton and Great Lakes, Michigan. So Teresa really wants to be a youth minister, um, feels like God's calling her to do that. And I think this is great training of, of how to relate to children. And it's pulling her out of her shell. You know, she's always been my, you know, always run into adoration and taking adoration shift and filling in for friends at Damascus that have the two to three AM shift. She'll go take their shift if they can't go or, um, and just really seeing how God is using her. And I'm so excited. She's going to be, uh, praying with the group of kids that go to, on Saturday mornings to pray at the abortion clinic in Pittsburgh. So she just has that heart. And I, and I just hear, um, her really feeling like this is such a cool thing to do. Like you're really touching lives and making an impact. Um, and she's just on fire. I, I look forward to her coming home and, and really this weekend and explaining, you know, more things, obviously for privacy, she can't say kids names or anything, but you know, it's just, uh, she was so involved with, uh, fellowship of Christian athletes at the public high school, um, her and our other daughter, uh, Diana. So they had a fellowship of Christian athletes and it, dissipated it got rid of you know and then they, we brought it back and and so it was just really trying to meet kids where they're at That's and right. letting them feel that you're there someone cares about them and not judging them so uh, that was such a big thing for her and uh, it's I look forward to every time she you know calls it's, it's like we know we only have a couple minutes because then she's busy doing something else but uh, I really feel like this is God's preparing her for her ministry of youth ministry and wherever God's leading her next, you know? So that's, that's great. Right. That's right. Well, I like, I like the fact that um, the youth minister had the gifts and the talents to um, be alive in Christ. And then that yeah. drew her. One of our co-hosts, yeah. Alan and Katie, our youth minister down in our Orlando area. And so I just love that you have to have a certain personality in a certain way, but you know, we have hope for the future, right? Because the youth, are coming alive in Christ. And whereas some people are in the pews, and one time I um, I asked the priest, I showed a mission field. I feel like I showed Africa because past the doctor. He said, the poor is in the pews. And it's the little babies. I'm sure some of y'all have little ones still. Little babies, and it's the youth that are coming alive to see Christ is in them. What do they have that I've just been sitting in the pew? So, Miss Sam. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna add something real fast. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we were at the Na- National Eucharist Congress uh, last oh, week. Oh, so awesome! I wasn't there, but and yeah. I was just seeing all the youth and and youth groups and sixty thousand people. And as we were doing the Eucharistic procession through the streets of Indianapolis, and just seeing how many young seminarians and how many young priests and and there were like two hundred bishops. It was just, oh my gosh! Our thirteen year old daughter Christina's like, I don't want to leave. <laughs> It was like, there's such a beautiful movement going on in our church right now. And this, uh, it was just, you know, what a beautiful, I mean, the meeting father, uh, Sister Marion James and and uh, she heard Lala Rose and Emily yes. Wilson. And it was just, but there were so many youth that was like, to me, wow, we have an awakening in our church. It's beautiful. That's, it's exciting too. And I was sad not to make it. So I don't know, was anybody else there on Judy or Sam? Were you all there? Okay, I wasn't there. So I just... I'm gleaming from the other people. So Sam, what what made your um, family come alive and, and some of them join Damascus? Well, I always told my other kids, you know, I wish my older nine had the opportunity to go to Camp Damascus. And when I spoke with the founders of Camp Damascus, their goal, because I was in the generation where a lot of friends were going to Young Life groups, and mm-hmm. leaving the Catholic Church because Young Life had the fun camps and Young Life had the legit, you know, all the cool things. And sure. the Catholic camps were like, 
you know, in a tent or around the campfire with no right. fun, no fun thing. <laughs> so the, the founders of Camp Damascus wanted to offer Catholic kids an authentic place okay. to learn and love the Lord sure, with yeah. sincere people who have given their lives over to Christ, who are so authentic. You know, teenagers and middle school kids can see right through that. Yes, Stay right. now on your fake. And they sure. see when you put in the time and the effort and the money that the Holy Spirit provided for that camp to build more cabins to, you know, they won't even open up a new facility or a new part of the building until they have the funding from people from prayer, you know, pr they pray and people come and say, you know, God has asked me, I love what you're doing here. I want to donate this money. And the founders are like, that's exactly how much we need to build like four more cabins. Oh, I so they yeah. They, what they, uh, my kids were just dumbfounded by the fact that they had like the largest rock, climbing wall in Ohio or on the East coast. And they have you know, the zip line that are safe and, and secure and they have the paintball and they have crafts and, and adoration and math and the very nice cabins and showers and a lake. Everything is clean and safe and amazing. And at any other camp, you know, what they were finding is that, Kids across America, you want to keep them close to Jesus, you invest in them and invest in facilities and make it amazing and let them have fun and the joy right. of the Lord will find them. Yeah, that's and right. I've seen I, I've been a a, a chaper in the past four years and you know the, the trips on the way home on the bus are still part of the retreat. The kids uh -huh. sharing, talking about how amazing they are. I had a one of our kids in the in the um in our bus was bawling his eyes out at the end of camp and i i thought something had happened and i went up to him and i was like are you okay he goes i'm gonna miss my counselor like he changed Aww. my life like these teenage <sighs> college and teenage helpers are there and listening and doing things that parents don't have the time energy and talent or the kids yeah. don't want to hear from us again <laughs> And but you're not the one. You go. Know, you're not the one. Yeah. But someone is. You pray, and then and they just yep. Yeah, they they have amazing music. They have little skits and talent shows. They have something called Color Wars, <laughs> where the kids are you know the competition because you know my boys are all about competition. I have nine. <laughs> I have nine sons and five okay, daughters, sure. and my yes. nine boys. Like you tell me, I'm gonna beat you at something i am all in the mm. foods the food's very good my daughter has a, a, a health problems and they have lots of allergy you know allergy friendly food and they take care of everybody my kid still talks about his last meal there he's like that was so great they have you know the amazing chapels they have quiet times they have prayer labs mm. most of the parents i know make a large effort so we're in maryland it's quite a hike they make That's an good. effort to drive or to come for that closing mass oh the closing mass will just make you either weep or uh tears of joy watching these teenagers oh. these middle school kids stand up and say i have been going to church my whole life but it wasn't until this weekend that Jesus spoke to me. The adoration night, it, when they have the large monstrance that each kid goes right up to. Again, you know, you can go on social media, you can see the videos. A friend of mine's son is the video, one of the video techs there. His oh, videos nice. of these kids just weeping in front of the monstrance. You're like, this is not real. This can, <laughs> are, we in, are we in the United States? Are we in Fatima in the 1930s? I mean, these kids That's are right. consecrating their lives. They're coming home. Three years ago, the boys group that my uh, middle school kids who are now high school and college who were in, they have a group called the Damascus Group, and they meet for prayer. They support uh -huh. each other. They, they want to, you know, every there's a couple spearheading 
who are like, let's do Bible study, let's pray together, let's pray for each other. That's they send great. the kids home. They send the kids home with like a, a a workbook, like a a journal. My twelve year old who is very uh, quiet, and he has this little book. He's like, Mom, I need to go do my prayers. And oh. there's a little calendar he can check off every day. And they have something called winter camp. My son's like, I want to go back. I want to go to winter camp. And we're excited for my daughter to get to be there for the next two years. And people ask, well, what do they do during the winter? Because it's the the, the camp, uh, the Catholic Youth Mission Camp is in the summer. But during the, the year, you know, um, Judy mentioned the women's conferences, the men's conferences. They have revivals. They have concerts. They also go into dioceses, dioceses that don't have programs like this, and they'll come. Like they, they came to the Baltimore Diocese, and they spent three weeks here, and they went to about six different parishes, and they got funded to go to each parish, and they were doing one or two day retreats. They do, uh, so they come to different parishes across the United States and do revivals. They bring their music groups. They pray with people. They teach them how to bring Christ to their home. We are blessed and we are praying and trying to fundraise, but they're trying to get a camp in Maryland up near Mount St. Mary's in Emmitsburg. So nice. th their goal, I think, you know, is they'll only do it if they can do it well. They don't, they're not going to just try to pop up camps, but they would love to have camps within three hours of every Catholic youth in America. And that takes us sitting back, you know, us, the grandparents and the parents and the relatives and neighbors and parishioners to pray and help fund these camps. So they won't open this one in Maryland unless they can have a huge rock climbing wall. They can have a lake with boats and they can have the rock, you know, the zip lines and the the paintball and all the things. If they can't have the a good rope, facility. The <laughs> yes, the high ropes. There was a big cheer. There was a big cheer for Maryland uh, it, because they said that they're really trying. And then Georgia, all those 60 fit kids from Georgia, they said, thanks be to God. It is going to Georgia keeps trying to get here. Keep praying, keep funding. They'll be able to open one there, too. Yes, that's so awesome. When my kids were growing up, because I'm I'm older than all you all, made similar to Julie, but I always wanted them to go on an adventure app instead of just go right to college. Because sometimes they're right. not ready to just leave mommy and daddy. And so this sounds like an event. I sent my son to Hawaii. My he'll say he sent himself, but he probably know Hawaii. I mean, no, he wasn't in his in his radar to go to Hawaii. And he was a changed man. Now, granted, he did it wasn't a religious experience, but it was an experience of growing up. And so I think sure. that this is just what the doctor ordered for people to out there saying my kid's not really ready for college because if you're a homeschool mom or you're a mom in a Christian community or you're like like Judy and or like Laura who's uh, you know kept her children very Catholic, you send them off to meet the wolves. They really sometimes think of this is a great place to be, you know. Some they don't stay with their their Newman Center, and some they don't stay with the friends that are following Jesus for fear that they're going to be labeled of some sort that they really love Jesus. So this is a great opportunity, Mom. So listen up. I mean, this is, shows me a little longer. I'll tell you why. First of all, I introduced all the people, which I wanted to do that for my future uh, for them, and also because we there's four on air. Usually we have two or three, and four does make a difference. But I'm enjoying it, so I hope you all are too. And, and now we get to go well, for our second time around. Then we'll just give our last remarks. But do you say if you want if anything else you wanted to say? You think that well, they, no. mothers out there listening, would need to hear? First of all, uh, Bernadette, you know, with her roommate that had been serving as a missionary every summer in summer camp, she graduated from college, Ave Maria, and um, so did our other four daughters. Uh, she knew her faith really well. She was on, she was captain of the soccer team there. She knew what discipline was. She was planning on going to medical school. Uh, but as the time as time went on, the Lord showed her that this was what he wanted for her. But um, she said that, Mom, what we want kids to take home, what they want, we want them to have an encounter with Jesus. This is her sixth year now. So she is in charge of formation of the missionaries. But she said um, if they can encounter Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and in the mass and uh, their own prayer times, that's what they can take home 
give to others and have the rest of their lives. So she said, the Catholic church is not boring. It is high adventure. And that's why we have the high ropes and all of these others and things. And we help the kids to put this into practice with scriptures and they say the scriptures. And this is something that, that parents can know that these kids can have within their hearts. Number sixth through 12th grade is who they minister to. But the missionaries are like 12th grade through college and after college. So there are, there are so many opportunities for kids of the different ages to both learn and to minister and to bring home. So I just want to thank the Lord that he has put this here. It's a great thing to give money to. If you think if I'm wanting to help rebuild the church, uh, I want to invest in the youth. So I just feel like the Lord has used it for our family, for, for our Bernadette. And uh, she she feels like she wants to spend the rest of her life there. She's dating a guy right now. And and she feels like she wants to get married up there and, and probably stay there and work a number of years. So because she sees the Lord using it so much in people's lives, inner healing and external healing as well. So nice. So if you're thinking of who do I want to give some money towards, this would be a great opportunity. And you may not be helping your kids or yourself helping someone that needs the money to be a missionary. I, I think it's phenomenal. So Laura. Great. So is it Damascus.net that people donate to, or what is the actual website to donate? Do you know? I think it's Damascus.org. Dot org. Okay. All right. Well, they can, you can them, find but... it under the thing of the Write your checks to Damascus.org. <laughs> Sign your name yeah. and then go and take a visit. Go ahead, Laura. You're yeah. in. You're well, in. I, you know, my big thing is um, our generation, we didn't have cell phones. And what I find one of the biggest assets is that these kids are actually interacting with each other between COVID and kids didn't talk, they're afraid. And, you know, now this is actually our Catholic kids are getting together talking to one another, actually making relationships and actually learning how to be friends. Because I, I feel like it's a, there's so many kids nowadays, it's fake friends. They're following each other on different social media sites and they're not actually opening up their hearts. What I feel like at Damascus, they're actually, you know, my daughter puts her cell phone aside and she's so busy. She doesn't have time to get her, use her cell phone. Like that is so healthy. So mm -hmm. beautiful to see these kids growing um, as, you know, adults and how to build relationships with people and then to build a deeper relationship with Christ. So uh, I told her, I said, I love the fact that these kids are so busy doing wholesome activities together and building bonds and relationships and friendships that, you know, and sadly, a lot of kids don't know how to do that nowadays. They have so much anxiety because they're following a stupid phone and, and social media. So it's, that's a, another thing for your child. If you have a child that, you know, is glued to their phone, just have them go to Damascus and they'll come out of their shell and really be, you know, learn how to actually build friendships, deep friendships and, and not fake. And, um, you know, really grow their relationship with Christ and really know that they, God loves them and he has special plans for them and that he has, you know, they're made in his image and likeness. And he is, you know, it's so many kids don't know that little things that we, we know they don't have that. They, and so um, I really feel like Damascus really, helps kids mature, especially if their parents are divorced. Um, my daughter had one of her uh, friends, uh, parents were divorced and the father was not supportive of them going to Damascus, but she was just on fire and, and she really, you know, so you just, you don't know what's going to happen, but I think the, the most beautiful thing is, is to let them, you know, let their spread their wings and, and, and blossom and, and let's see what God's got planned for their next stage of life, you know, so. I am so blessed and so glad. This is one of the few camps that they do not have their cell phones with them. Oh, okay, thank you for saying that. I didn't know that. My 17-year-old almost had a nervous breakdown on the bus ride because we don't even let them have it on the bus. And he, he didn't, this year he didn't want to go. And he said, mom, I'm still, I want to go back next year. Cause I had oh. told him this was his last year. Cause he graduated and he's like, no, I want to go back next year. And I'm, I, I, I kept saying that. So I'm like, is your hand shaking? Cause you don't have your phone, but <laughs> these kids, I also have for, for parents who have kids with medical, they have a nurse on staff. I had okay. a son who's on medication and they were on point with keeping his medication, giving him his medication, making sure um, that kids who had problems and, and had dietary and health needs, there's nurses on staff 
to take care of that. And so right. if anybody has concerns about that, but I was, I was sharing, I was showing this. Yeah, show uh, us, show us. I'm reading this book called The Anxious Generation, which is going yeah. viral. Oh, that's it's good. Secular. Okay. It's, I thought you wrote it's it. Off, it's, I didn't write this one. Yeah. <laughs> this is going in Next secular. Time. Yeah, this is this is going viral and secular and Christian and worldwide wow. because what's happening to our youth mm -hmm. from the social media, from being on on computer all the time, from being staring at their phones all the time. I'm reading this book and the answer to this the book, Camp Damascus is the answer to this book. Getting your kids out, getting your kids <laughs> on adventure, getting yeah. your kids to put their phones down and build community and build you know, personal relationships with people. Yeah. This has been amazing. And I, I just, I, I, for, I forgot to mention how, um, how life changing it was for my son to be phone free for that many days. <laughs> That's so right. There's also a college in um, somewhere like Wyoming that doesn't have cell phones when you're in college. I don't know what that name of that is. It's Catholic college. I was thinking this is great. You know, um, I would like someone to share, just kind of speak up about what is Saint, who is Saint Damascus, and then secondly, I want to just mention I've seen Judy's baby girl Bernadette is there, and she used to do videos. I see the videos; they do a whole like they have videos out there, podcasts, maybe TV. I don't know. So share one of y'all share who is Saint Damascus because then I'm I'm learning as you, I go along here. I don't know anything about Saint Damascus. I know that Paul was on the road to Damascus, and that's okay, where so his so okay. was. But cool. um, but um, make a blunder on the show. <laughs> about that. What, what was the other question about that? What okay, did then you tell know? about Bernadette does some videos or podcasts. I know oh, that. Oh yeah, you, you go on C Y S C and you do week one, 2024. Week two, they have ones from Centerburg and they have ones. I believe they have some from Michigan, from Brighton, Michigan. Okay. Um, but it shows the kids themselves. Sometimes you'll see kids you know having mm -hmm. the fun and then. Uh, the second half is like reverencing the Eucharist. Uh, and honestly and truly, I've heard more stories of these kids where they just felt the presence of the Lord. Some of them have actually seen the face of Jesus in the Eucharist. Um, and it, it, um, that, that, that's, that's the big thing is the experience of encountering Jesus. And that that's is, um, that's the most important thing. But so Paul, it was the scales were lifted from his eyes on the that's way to okay. Damascus. See, that's, what, can, that's how much I know. You can <laughs> find so videos. You can find videos and testimonies on YouTube, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. oh, they're all there. Uh, I'll show. I'll send you the link to my son. And it's just all those things at the end of camp. These kids sharing how their lives have been changed. I just love yeah. it. I think this is a different kind of show. It's like the moms speak out, but I think it's important. And so I'm gonna. We usually close the show with the last words, and you can tell these final things. You can say. You know, you kind of kind of sum up the show and then they say how they can reach you. Somebody go, I want to talk to Laura or Judy or Sam. And then they have their information and then again, close with the Damascus.org. Judy. OK, well, about the show? My, my email is uh, jzhartney at yahoo.com. If anybody wants to get hold of me, I can look there and um I would just like to say thank you for everyone listening and um, please pray that the Lord will use this, this wonderful new ministry in the hearts of our children and ultimately in our own lives. Oh, and look on for women's retreats and men's retreats and highly consider going up there yourselves for a weekend, either in the fall or in the spring, because the Holy Spirit will indeed touch your own life. Thank you. That was very good. And Laura, sum up and then email. How do you go? Sure, sure. Well, if you're looking for a camp that you want your child to grow closer to Jesus, to grow as a person, um, I think this is the camp. I think that, uh, you know, you don't have to bug them. Just mention it once um, and just say, you know, I think this will really be great for you. Give them some space. Um, Cause sometimes when I tell the kids over and over, they're like, okay, mom. And then they just don't want to do it. So it, it's kind of um, showing them maybe a video of kids talking about how great it is, is more enticing. So, um, cause you know, obviously we're not cool and we're not hip and we're not legit. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> but, you know, they know we're right. They just don't want to admit it yet. So like, you know, someday they, you know, but just for them to see that we're not boring Catholics, you know, we, we have love and, and life in us and, and that's what we want them to express um, in their lives um, and not be so introverted, but to come out and proclaim Christ, like just be confidently Catholic and, and strong. Yes. So when they're in college that, you know, whatever they meet people, they can de defend their faith and share about Damascus. And uh, my email is la.grahalba, G-R-I-J-A-L, B as in boy, A, at fuse, F-U-S-E dot net. And uh, I think that... Um, you said Jesus is her last name, but I don't agree, Judy. <laughs> Your last name is hard to say for me. So I always introduce you as Laura. Okay, Miss Sam, you're the anchor, and then I'll close the show. And let me tell you this, don't... Anybody be offended? I close the show when you won't see me because if we start talking, YouTube tapes it. So I'll just say, great show, ladies. Thank you for being on, Sam. Yes. So you can reach me on Facebook under Sam Lancaster Fatsinger. I'm on Instagram on Sam JMJ. Uh, my husband and I wrote a book on, with Ave uh, Maria Press. You can contact us through Ave I Maria Press. I do know of you. Oh, wow. I do know of you from so, Jane Ann. I do know of you. No, so okay. yeah, I just met these. I just met Sam on show. I don't know Sam. Sam, put it up again. This is a very important book, y'all. What is it called? The Catholic, the Catholic Guide to it's Spending like Less and Living More. Because we have, um, we were looked at through Washington Post because our kids mm -hmm. were graduating college debt free. And they were like, how can these people have 14 kids and live debt free? So, they She's a phenomenal woman. And, and would you please come back on the show sometime and just share with your husband. My husband and I can have post it together on Go Tell the World. Thank you. I didn't know you, see, but I'm glad. I see it. It's, it was a random shot. I go, Judy, I don't know this lady. <laughs> but I trust you and Amy. I did. But I said, I don't know her. But I do know you. I just, I'm just i just not good on names. So plus your name is Sam. And then, so thank you so much. That is, a, you have to have the book. You have to go get the book. And Laura, I'll be back again. The co-hosts always decide what they want to say on the air. If they want to talk about Blessed Mother or Mass or Damascus. So I'm Ellen Mongan. And you can reach me at wow Ellen at at yahoo.com. I want to say that when you meet, you're sitting in the pew or you're listening to the show and you're going, I don't know Jesus like these people are saying. But when you meet a person that really knows the Lord, you want more of Jesus. You want to meet the Lord and you want to be his friend too. And if you you like think you're seeing a man with a cowboy hat, <laughs> he's on the barrage, it's St. Tom, Thomas. <laughs> He said, but that's right. He's on the show. We do the show, no bloopers, because that makes us humble. And then we think, well, I didn't want to really say that or do that. I could have done better. So it brings humility. A lot of people rewind it and take some out. I do not. So you meet someone like one of these ladies and you say, oh, me too, hopefully, that I met Laura seven years old. So some people don't meet him at all till they're like 97. And we want you to meet him today. So may you need a trip to Damascus for a, um, it's not a saint, so a trip to Damascus for a retreat. Maybe you need to send a child that you thought this child needs more of Jesus. And I know that for sure. But sometimes, like a lot of you said, you're not the one. You say the words and they're going blah, 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 blah. And then you know what? Send them to Damascus. <laughs> See if they come back different. You go, is that my child? And it will be in Christ. Hey, thank you, ladies. Judy, Laura, um, anytime yeah. you want to come to the show again, Sam, all of y'all, you're welcome. And thank you for a little longer show. Listen to the end. The beginning is just the introductions. And don't give up hope. Jesus is calling you and he wants you alive in him. Thank you again. And I'm going to turn us off at this very moment. And thank you again. This is the hard part, guys. Just watch me. I, 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 um, I squint because I'm actually blind. <laughs>